Hi guys, this is Mina, and today we are going to learn about SQL constraints. Constraints are used to specify rules for data in a table in order to restrict the kind of data that can be entered into a table. This means that if we set a constraint on a table or a column and there is any violation of the constraints, then the data cannot be entered into the table. The action gets aborted. This is important in relational database because it ensures the accuracy and reliability of the data in the table. These are the most common constraints used in SQL. The not null, unique, primary key, foreign key, check, and default constraints. And they can be specified at the time of table creation or after a table has been created using the alter table statements. In today's video, we are going to learn about the not null constraint. And this constraint ensures that colon cannot store null values. By default, a colon can store null values. So by specifying the not null constraints, this enforces a particular colon to always accept a value. Let's move on to our SQL Server Management Studio and try this constraint out. We are going to first demonstrate drawing table creation and after a table has been created, how we can enforce the not null constraint. In our SQL Server Management Studio, I'll go to New Query and select the database that we'll be working in. I've created a database called Tutorials. So I'm going to work in this tutorials database. Under Object Explorer, I go to Databases, and this is the tutorial database I'm talking about. I click on the plus sign to open it up, go to Tables. And as you can see, I do not have any table here. So I'm going to create a table, and I'm going to enforce the not null constraint on that table. This is the query to create a table called People, and these are the columns. If you want more information on how to create tables in SQL Server Management Studio, feel free to watch my video in the description section. Okay, so all of these columns by default will allow nulls to be stored in there. So if I want to enforce the not null constraint, that will prevent any null value from being stored in any of these columns within my people table, then I need to type the word not null. And that's it. If I execute this command, a table called people is going to be created and the ID column will not accept any null values. I'm going to go ahead and execute this command. Go to tables. Now I have a table called people. I'm going to open this table. So far I do not have any records in there. But if I go to columns, I can see that the ID column is set to not null, which means that it will not accept any null values. It always has to contain a value. The rest of the columns, which are last name, first name, age, email, are set to allow nulls by default. This is how you can enforce the not null constraints when creating a table. And not null can be specified on multiple columns or even all the columns. So like if you are creating another table, you can specify not null for all of these columns. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to alter a table and to enforce the not null constraint on that table. And I'm going to paste the command to alter a table here as well. Again, if you want to learn how to alter a table, watch my video on how to alter a table in the description section. So this Statement is going to alter the people's table and change the column to accept null because I've specified not null here. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this command. Command has been completed successfully again. Go to columns and as you can see the first name has been set to also always accept values. It's not null here. So right now as you can see I have not null for ID column and not know for first name column as well. This is how to use T-SQL to 
create not null constraints on a table. Alternatively, you can right click on the table, the people's table in the object explorer, go to design, and in the design view, you have the option to check these boxes under the not null column. So if I want to set last name to not allow nulls, check this box, then it means that my last name column will be set to not null. I'll save these changes, go to my papers table, refresh it, go to columns, and there we have it. Last name has also been set to not null. So guys, these are the various ways to set not null constraint on a table in SQL Server Management Studio. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you in my next one. Bye-bye.